Have you ever wanted to create a before and after image in Photoshop? Could be a new haircut, a kitchen remodel, the fact you finally washed your car, or in my case, an unprocessed raw photograph versus a particularly well-developed one. Each image is exactly the same size, with labels that are exactly aligned with each other, and every single edit is non-destructive, so you can change your mind anytime you like. Two things up front. First of all, I'm working inside of a square. You can work inside of a rectangle if you prefer. And obviously I've got my before image at top and my after at bottom. You might be working side by side. That's just fine. All this stuff translates. And so I'm going to start off by going up to the file menu and choosing new. And then I'll switch to art and illustration just because that's the most flexible way to work. That way you have a color profile assigned automatically. It's going to be SRG be by default that's just fine i'm thinking instagram which were i working with the square would be 1080 by 1080 pixels but i like to work bigger than that i like to multiply these guys times two or three or four just because you can always down sample very easily right up sampling is tougher and now i'll enter 2160 for this guy so does that make sense you can just you can upload an image this size to to instagram and let instagram do the scaling as well anyway I, I just got a comment on this the create and close buttons are in opposite locations depending on the platform here on the pc creates on the left on the mac it's over here on the right i just hate that because if you're cross-platform i'm sure you've run into this and you've probably been like what because you, you sit here you fill out the dialog box and you accidentally click close and then you're like what i do did i just close out Am I an idiot? It's not your fault. It's because you've gotten used to this being the create button on the Mac. And here you are on Windows. You got to click on this button. I wish that just Adobe, come on. And so we, that, that needs fixing. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to take my scorpions and I want to put them inside of boxes. And so I want non-destructive crops and you can do that. You can work with the frame tool. I just happen to loathe that tool like so much. I can't even tell you. I prefer to work with the rectangle tool because it's so much easier. And so just grab the rectangle tool, click. And I already know I want it to be 2160 wide because that's how wide the image is. And I want it to be half that 1080 tall because I'm, I've got an image on top and on bottom. Click okay and I get for myself in this case it came up green it might come up black for you it might have a stroke in your case get rid of the stroke unless you want a stroke I don't have a stroke can you see there's no strokes going on but if you do add a stroke it will appear in your final composition anyway I'm going to switch to the black arrow tool right here if you prefer the path selection tool and it's got a keyboard shortcut of a for arrow and drag this guy up so it snaps into the proper location and then I'll change the name of this layer to top and I'll create a copy of it. Jump by pressing Control J, Command J on the Mac. And then I'll rename this bottom one, bottom. I know, right? And then I'll drag this guy down so we can see it. So it snaps into the proper location. It's a little confusing that they're both the same color. So I just like to change them. It, it, this does not matter in the, 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 the least what colors you go with. It's just helpful to have two different colors at work. All right, now I want to go get my scorpion. It's a hadrurus spotix. I believe it's pronounced something like that. A hadrurus, whatever. Anyway, black hairy scorpion, even though quite Quite obviously it's blue. I would call it baby's first scorpion because this is the first scorpion I ever saw that I captured raw with my iPhone. And if you like a little bit of biology, entomology, if you like mixed in with your Photoshop knowledge, then by all means subscribe and turn on notifications. All right. Now I want you to see that this is a camera raw smart object. That will become important later, but that means everything I do to it is non-destructive. So just open in camera raw, hit open object, so forth. Now what I'm going to do is switch to the rectangular marquee tool just because it gives you the best shortcut menu. Notice if you right click, then all of the commands are there, including duplicate layer. Now I want to send this not to new because that would be yet another new image. I want to send it to untitled one, which is the new image I just created and I'll click OK and switch to it. Now I have this big scary scorpion, which apparently it, it's a low venom. It's a non-fatal bug. 
for what it's worth. And uh, that's digitally so when you're just working on it virtually like we are. But I'm going to go ahead and move this guy around. You can control drag if you like to move the image. That's so command drag on the Mac. What I need to do is I'm going to drag it down so it's in front of bottom so we can see that it's way too big. So I'll go up to the edit menu and choose free transform. And assuming that my width and height values are linked together, which they are, I'm just going to change either one of them to 72%. Obviously, your, your specific scaling is going to be different. You could also rotate it or something like that. I don't want to. I like this just fine. And this is kind of where I want it to be, right? But that's no good. You don't want to put it where you want it to be yet. So we'll get there in just a second you're gonna love that step too it's a lot of fun and right now though you just want to move it down so it snaps to the top left corner of its rectangle right there which is bottom all right and then just press the enter key in order to accept that change now we need to make a copy of this guy I could just jump it but if i do that they're both linked to the same original and so then if i went and made a modification to the unprocessed version of the scorpion then i would change the processed version as well so what i need to do instead right click and you choose new smart object via copy you may know about this one this way you have two independent versions of your smart object that edit independently as well so i'll go ahead and choose that and there it is now i'll move it on top of the green guy the green rectangle switch to my move tool up here and just drag it into position so it snaps top left once again so just like it did for this bottom uh scorpion all right let's go ahead and put them inside their containers and you do that just by clipping them and my favorite way to clip, there's a bunch of different ways, is to press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click on the border between the two of them, like so. Do you see that, the horizontal border? That's a little confusing so far. So let's do the same thing for this guy. So you click, you Alt or Option, click on the border between the layer you want to clip and the layer that is going to do the clipping. And we now have two independent uh, versions of this particular scorpion. Hey, real quick, instead of positioning your images so that they're precisely flush, would you like them to have a bit of a border, one that is uniform, not only all the way around, but across the center as well? Just so happens, I show you how to do exactly that at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to those scorpions already in progress. And now what I want to do is I want to make a before version. So he's after, the bottom guy's after, but the top one's going to be before. So I'll double click on it and that'll bring up, because it's a camera raw smart object, that will bring up camera raw. And I'll click on a triple dot and choose reset to default. But I decided that wasn't, that is quite different. It just doesn't look all that different. I, I did all kinds of, this is before, by the way, just so you can see. I did all kinds of retouching in here so he doesn't have a stick in his claw, all this other stuff. But it, it just doesn't look that different. So I need to cheat is what I'm saying. So I'm going to browse my profiles. Click browse profiles right there. And then I'm going to twirl open vintage and go with vintage three because it looks like a before version of the photograph. It'll stand out really nicely. And what's interesting about these, in case anybody's thinking, gosh, you know, that'd be great if you did a video on these because they're, they're at work inside Camera Raw and Lightroom, by the way. There's tons of different profiles available to you, lots anyway. And I don't know what they weigh. And I'll click on back and notice that they don't carry settings along with them they don't reveal their settings so you can add settings if you thought oh this is way too bright you could take down the exposure i don't want to i want it to look overly bright but you get the idea and then you can play with the amount and so forth anyway what i want in order to make these two images align with each other i've got a twirl open optics this is where you just have to accept that this is a fact. The what I had done is turned on profile corrections for the other uh, guy, the other scorpion, and I want it to happen here too. So notice we'll get a little, we'll, we'll be defeating a little bit of pin cushioning in its uh, abdomen or whatever that's called. Notice that it, it blows up just a little bit. And then I'll turn on remove chromatic aberration because why not? And then click OK. Although iPhones do a great job of getting rid of chromatic aberrations, even when you're working with raw images 
without your knowledge. This is a bunch of sophisticated, you know, software junk that goes on. Firmware, probably. Anyway, adjustments that go on in the background. And now what we want to do, this is the part where you're just going to get so excited. What you want to do is here in the Layers panel, let's make the Properties panel go away. Here in the, the Layers panel, you want to select this other Scorpion right here. And it's non-adjacent, so you can't shift click. You have to control click or command click, but don't do it over here. Don't control or command click the thumbnail. You have to control or command click the empty area of the layer like that. And now they're both selected. And now watch this, you move them together and you can decide, okay, now, and they're both gonna align the same inside their frames. So they are simpatico, which is totally awesome. Okay, now at this point I figured, hey, let's go ahead and add some text. And so I'll grab the type tool, which you can get, of course, by pressing the T key. I like to mention that. And I'll just go ahead and call this guy unprocessed, even though that's a total lie because they just processed it. Raw in lowercase. Hey, that's up to you. It is lowercase, by the way, even though everybody out there enters R-A-W in all caps. It's just so so wrong it, 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 the last time you had a carrot was it a cooked carrot of course it wasn't and was it a raw carrot yes but did you spell it capital r capital a capital w no you did not and notice up here in, under the filter menu it's camera raw it's just title capped but the a and the w are lowercase because it's just raw is that there's the it's not a special format there's there are raw formats that are raw but and they can be caps if you want. Anyway, I digress. Who cares? Anyone do what you want. But I'm going to now load this guy as a selection outline. So I'm not going to control click here. I'm going to control click on the thumbnail like so. And that way with my move tool active, I got to switch to the move tool. I now have these active alignment icons. And so I can align to the left and I can align to the top like so. And now I want to deselect the image. That's very important. So control D and then command D on the Mac, of course, and then jump this guy again, control or command J, go down to this one. So the bottom one of the two load, this guy's the selection by control or command clicking on its thumbnail. And then the move tool is still active. We're already flush left, but now we need to be aligned to the top edge like so, so that they're in exactly the same locations inside of their frames. And now I would deselect once again, press the T key to switch back to the type tool and call this developed. What, you know, your text is totally up to you. All right, I'm gonna shift click on this guy because I wanna put him inside of a group. And so I'll click on the hamburger icon in the top left corner of the layers panel. And I will choose this guy right here, new group from layers. And I will go ahead and call this guy labels, let's say, as long as I'm naming it. And now I can move these letters into a different location. But wait, actually, let's let's just go ahead and assign a drop shadow. You could assign a stroke, something just to offset the text. So I'll click on uh, the FX icon and choose drop shadow. And I want it to be at a little bit of an angle, but otherwise these settings are just fine. Don't really care. Just want to make the text legible. And now if you switch to your move tool, once again, because the labels group is selected, you can move these guys down together. And so I'm just scooting them over by pressing shift along with one of the arrow tools, arrow keys, pardon me. And now that I'm done, I am done. I'm going to press shift F to switch to the full screen mode and zoom on in as well. And that my friends is how you go about making sure that everything is perfectly aligned scorpions and text alike. So what do you think? Comment below and then like if appropriate, subscribe and turn on notifications to learn how to add a perfectly uniform border around your images that absolutely remains completely consistent even between the images. Join me at patreon.com slash deke now and then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.